Hey guys, welcome back to Kim Style Reviews. What we've got is a big one. Fans Hobbies, MB08, the latest in their Master Builder, Masterpiece Scaled Series, double equal. So, let's go ahead and just knock out the measurement first. He looks to be about, hmm, 14 and a half, 15 inches tall, maybe 14 and three quarters. I actually have to stand up to take a look at this guy. Yeah, he's that big. He's big, he's chunky. And it's a good and bad thing, and we'll get into it during this review. Um, I will say in advance, I know there have been a lot of glowing reviews about this. To me, it's, it's okay. It's fine. Is it that definitive overlord that you've been waiting for? Personally, I don't think so, but I'm glad a lot of people are happy with it. But at the same time, it kind of gives me the opportunity to go over some things that I don't think have really, or at least I've seen, have been gone over. But anyway, comes with... Overlord himself, he, or Double Evil, he actually is split between two boxes over here. So you've got the tank in one box, the jet in another box. There's no option like Planet X figures and stuff like that to buy them separately. They both come together just in separate boxes. I asked uh, Vance Hobby why, and they said it's because they can kind of go lighter on the shipping by shipping them separate because they would put them in a different um, pricing range or whatever, and they'd have to pay significantly more per package rather than just you know shipping them separate which makes sense weight and stuff like that if you guys do a lot of buy and sell and trading even as fans you'll know that once you get into some of these larger figures the price ranges just get outrageous but anyway these are they call them power pilots but in the original series they were giga and mega then they go along with the tank and the jet that this transform into giga tank mega jet his blaster comes like this, but you just take the handle down, like so, all right? And then, of course, the front of his jet, which acts as a shield, too. There's also, I believe this piece is for the fortress mode and a cover that's part of the ramp as well. So not going to do the whole layout picture and stuff like that because... It comes with a lot, but not much at the same time. So we're taking a look at Giga and Mega, and I will say off the bat, I will turn these guys around. They have a problem keeping balance, and part of it's because they don't have heels. And this is one thing that I wish that third-party companies would fix in general, whether it's Power Masters, Breast Masters, whatever, if you're going to start giving them this articulation and things like that, actually give them some decent heels so that they can stand straight up. That would be very appreciated because obviously, whether it's a head in the back, whether it's an engine piece or whatever it is, these are naturally back heavy. So just adding that extra support so you can actually use that articulation that you're going out of your way to give them, it would be very appreciated, at least for me. I can't speak for every fan, but yeah, there we go. That's... That is amazing. So, since he's in my hand, they both have the same articulation to him. So I'll put him, I'll actually lay him down because I feel like he's gonna fall anyway. But articulation, head can technically go 360. We'll just take it there because that back piece kind of blocks it. All right. Not a lot of up and down swing on the shoulders outward, but it's there. Again, the back armor blocks, but it can technically, it has a 360 range of motion, but is blocked by this back armor, which doesn't move. Elbow bend, but it only bends to, well, mm, just below 90 degrees, if you want to call it that. Focus a little bit better. No waist articulation. All right, front and back swing. The hips, actually 360, which is really good. Great amount of knee bend, and no ankles, so no ankle tilt or anything like that. So it's okay, but I wish they would take that these guys to the next level because they're fun. You know, minifigures and stuff like that, they go inside of his chest and kind of just hide, so it'd be fun to be able to just take some real photography with them and things like that. Uh, it balances so bad that I'm not going to try to do anything crazy with them. But what I will show you... Is the transformation on this guy, which is pretty standard. It seems like no matter what the company is, this is how 
This is how Breastmasters transform. Which makes sense. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's one. Get him out of the way. There's two. But make sure we're actually focused there. Now we'll say the colors chosen for this are great. Just even this, I don't know if it's like a sky bluish. It's got some green tint to it, but it, it's really, really nice. Now we're just gonna go ahead and insert these guys into overload. I keep wanting to call him Overlord, but double evil. There we go. Just, just opens. It actually has two hinges, one and two. They're Giga. Goes on this side. And the way that it works, I'll show you on the next one since this one's already in. Each of these has two tabs, and there are two tabs that these peg into. So, and two, and you can see there are gimmicks when you press these in. So, missiles, and a gun. All right, so let's just put them back. Close just like so. And all right. So we're taking a look at Mr. Double Evil, and I will say my probably only real gripe about this thing that really keeps me from being like, oh yeah, this has the possibility of being the definitive overlord, blah blah blah, is these damn ankles. They did really well, and I, I will say, you guys have heard it before on my reviews, I'm not the biggest fan of ratchet joints but this one should definitely have them because of the weight um there's too much space in between the ratchets front and back and it tends to let him rock and then go back forward things like that and fall backwards and you can see even there there's just it's not solid there's too much play in between the ratchet points and things like that they just don't hold great and then the actual ankle tilt is a normal just friction joint. So, and that one, I think with the weight of this thing, and these click in and out apparently. With the weight of this thing, it just doesn't work. At least not to my liking, it's not stable enough. But, with that being said, let's go ahead and go over the articulation on this guy, because it does really have a great range of it. So, you see the up and downward movement, the whole neck, where the neck meets the clavicle there, can go up and down, but it has its own separate ball joint. They can make it look down, up, just a great range of motion in the neck. All right, ratchets here on the shoulder, move that in and out. The shoulder itself, the armor, has some separate movement there. Full 360. Alright, so you can do it like that. Or if you want to, underneath. You can also do it, again, separate. Friction joint here. And for ratchets where you blatantly hear them, I'm not going to say this is a ratchet when you hear click, 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 click. And I like that they went with the soft ratchets in the elbow. Really nice. Double jointed. Finger articulation. Fans hobby. Some of the best in the business when it comes to hands. I really wish that they would start ball jointing their fingers so you could get that finger spread as well. That would be some next level shiz. But, even as is, they're really nice. Let's go ahead and look. Rotation there. No, like, in and out or 
sway, whatever you would call it. wrist rocking. There we go. So looking at the waist, and that's that other piece of the track that I showed you guys on the shield. It does tab in underneath there. It tabs in pretty well, but it just happened to hit my hand and not being able to see exactly where it pegs in. Might have to leave that off for a second. Hmm. Yeah, because I don't want to get my head in the camera or anything like that. And these missiles as well, watch these. They hold on decently with friction, but when you get to moving it around, unfortunately you do have to use two hands for this piece just because of the size of it, ratchets, things like that. So you don't really have a, you can't really be ham-handed with this guy because it, the thing will fly out of your hands and stuff like that because the ratchets don't really have a set level of, I guess, tolerance between them all. So this one might be soft, this one might be really hard, like you heard the loud clicks versus barely any clicking and things like that here. So just go about it two-handed and be careful. Keep that in mind. So it actually has some ab crunch, not a lot, but a little bit. All right, so these hip skirts here move. These move. The back part don't. So let's take a look. Keep the legs straight. A good amount for the back, considering that doesn't move. I mean, more power to it. All right. And I did it to the max, so it did pop that off. Just a ball joint. Pop that right back in. Let's go outwards. Get that out of the way. Not a lot. All right, and it's not like you can turn it, so what you get to the side is what you get. Knees, double joint it. That's a great amount of motion there. And even though kind of loosey-goosey, it does hold well in place, okay? 360 friction on the hips. And we talked a little bit about the ankles. Nice clicks front and back. Now one side stays really well, one side doesn't. Those are just held in by friction, those little flaps there. So it kind of is what it is. And again, the side to side rock. I like it. And you see it there. It wants to lean a bit forward and things like that. I just wish that they were tighter, the ratchets on these heels. So, fans hobby, if you're thinking about doing some fixes, maybe with a later release or something like that, those would be something I'd recommend because they'd really take this figure to another level. It's just the weight of it, which isn't a bad thing. This is an all plastic piece, so it's not like they could have taken out die cast and stuff like that, but it's, I mean, they should have really taken that into consideration and I, I wish these companies just had people that will play and pose and kind of show them like, hey, when I do this, it falls over, that kind of stuff, you know? But for what it is, like I said, it's it's okay, but it's just not great. And some little things really could have made this great, more fun, less intimidating to play with. All right, and now we'll take a quick look at his weapons. You've got the gun here, standard fare. It just slides right into a tab that rests right in there. The shield has two options, which I love. So there are two males right there, and you can see the indents right here on his shoulders, and it just slides right in. So. And you don't need to close that up, but why not? But you see again, look, it's starting to get, he's a, he's a tipsy man. So, I mean, there's no reason for that. It should, it should be tighter. Okay. And both the gun and the shield as well, if it wasn't blatant. off the turn salve. They're also plastic. Alright, use that ab crunch there.
Raise the camera a little bit more. Give it some tilt. And there we go. Now the shield also has the option of just plain being held in hand. So you see this piece here, slides right into that same spot as the gun. And this one is a bit more heavy, but still holds okay, but you can see how it takes that friction joint and really starts to weigh it down. So we will actually just... See what we can do in terms of reversing the same pose. Holy crap, that looks bad. All right. We're, we're going to make some adjustments here. Yeah. And again, to me, that's all stuff that should be taken into account, so. There we go. That out of the way. Let's see what we can do. I may have failed. I cannot think of a good look off the top of my head for the shield. So, the gun back in place. Yeah, that, that's the best I can do off the top of my head. Alright guys, and here is one of two alt modes for this guy. I've already got Giga and Mega sitting inside of them, but they've actually got these mixed up for their instructions, so I just did it as they said to do it. Let me see if I can pry in here. I just bear it down on it and pop the wheel out. Oh. All right, so the landing gear, as you can see, is retractable. But this is really hard to get into, even having a little bit of fingernail. I cannot. This is just the end of a pair of fingernail clippers. But they actually have Giga inside of here and Mega inside of there. I don't know why. Let's go ahead. I haven't tried actually switching them. Maybe they did it because the colors match, but let's see. I know their backpacks are shaped a little bit different, so... Let's see if it fits. That's the more narrow one, so if this one fits, the other one definitely does. So yeah. There we go. Let's let's go ahead and keep it appropriate. But you see they fit inside of there just fine. It's pretty cool because I wish I would have showed you guys this before. The cockpits do have the gear that goes up and down to make space for them. It's nice. So you can see how Mega looks in there. There you go. And we will go ahead and take a look at the not Mega Jet first. And this is huge. But it's crazy. Um, a lot of the weight is in the leg portion of Double Evil. So when you get this, even though it's humongous, let's actually take a look at it. It measures front to back, I would say front to back of the thrusters. It's about 17 inches with 13 and a half. 
So definitely not thin inside of a Detolf, no matter how you cut it. But it's big, it's huge, it's very, very nice. So you've got this turret here that can move. Rolling wheels on the landing gear. Now all of the landing gear is retractable. So if you want, you can go ahead and just put that up. These, you actually have to pop the arms out and then put them back. Or can you do it inside? Yeah, there's not a lot of room, but there are little doors in here that these flip in. So we'll get that back down. This is a little bit big for the flight post stands that I use, so I'm just going to keep the landing gear out, keep them as is. Get that to the side. Reach across here. Okay. Giga tank. And it's nice looking. Now this one has some more moving pieces than the jet. This you can get about 45 degrees each direction. As well as on the turret itself. No ratchets, just friction. This piece, static. And these treads actually do roll, but you have to have a pretty rough surface for it to actually get the friction for them to roll on. But nice rubber treads and stuff like that, a really strong rubber too. It's impressive. I will say, as much as I'm meh about the robot mode, this is definitely the most impressive Giga Tank and Mega Jet that I've ever seen. Alright, and lastly, we're taking a look at the Fortress mode here. And, before I forget, it does come with a sheet of stickers for both Double Ever, Evil and Power Baser. So, really big, another non-detolf display. Only 14 inches tall, so height-wise it can, but with 14 inches in length, maybe I was wrong, what are we going to see? Length is right under... 15 inches, so yeah, maybe it will fit. It seems wide to me, but technically it can, but with the bars inside of a detolf and stuff, it's going to be tight. Not going to rotate this or anything like that. It's stable once you get it set, but it's not stable enough to move or anything. The fortress, it only connects to the half of the tanks by two pieces that peg in right there. So it's just not something that you can move, take. You're going to have to disassemble it and things like that if you want to move it around. It's too big to fit on my turnstile, so just with my hands, it's not really feasible. But, got some nice satellite pieces here. You have Giga on the main base here. I'll actually zoom into it some. Got Giga on the main base there. This does go in and out in order to give him room to sit down, him or Mega. Put that back. And then Giga. Or actually, this is Mega. My bad. But he's at this turret. You also have the gun, which can go up and down, but not going to put it all the way down. Well, I'll get him out of the way. We'll actually seat him in the seat over there so we can get that down. I wish it could turn, but it might make it wonky when it's actually being used as a blaster for double evil. But this turret can side to side. And you can sit, sit him right there in the tank seat. And I mean, it works. You also have... This robotic arm here, which has some articulation. The top half of the claw moves, the bottom half does not. You can see from the pin there that that's the only side that's meant to move. All right, peg that back in. Can go side to side. This is just where one of the satellites is stored so that it can close. And I forgot to show this in the tank mode. This piece here goes in and out. These missiles do come out. They don't shoot or anything like that. So yeah. And I guess, you know, that's a good area to end on because my overall thought with this kind of ties into 
when I think about stuff like the missiles being removable and stuff like that. I think it's a very nice toy. And for me at this stage of my personal collecting, I'm not really into quote unquote toys, even though these everything behind these shelves classifies into the category of toys. They're all, at the end of the day, action figures, some transform, some don't, some are die cast, some aren't. But in general, you're gonna, my collection has a lot of stuff from $500 to over a grand and things like that. I like higher end stuff. And it's not to say that this is bad because it's not that, but it's not necessarily for somebody like me. Um, but if you're somebody who likes to, this is basically a big desk bot, a very big oversized desk bot, the biggest desk bot, fiddle bot I've ever seen. And it's priced pretty appropriately at $225 for the three alt modes, the fact that it transforms between all three pretty fluidly and stuff like that, the Giga, the Mega, you know, and all the gimmicks and things like the missiles that pop out and stuff like that, if that's for you, awesome. I'm more of a personally just die cast, heavy articulation, LED gimmicks kind of guy, like the flame toy stuff and things like that. So even though I don't, this doesn't fit into my collection. It's not the kind of overlord I'd want, personally, besides size. I do think it's a pretty darn nice figure, and most people who are into mainly Transformers will really dig this. Um, you saw my thoughts on things like the ankles and whatnot. Could be better, but still not horrible. Even though I'm not glowing about this piece, it's not that I think it's bad, it's just not my preference, if that makes any sense. But anyway, let me know you guys' thoughts and things like that in the comment section, because I'd like to hear what you guys think as well, because I know quite a few people bought this. But again, this has been Fans Hobbies, MB08, Double Evil, their homage to Overlord. This has been another Kumasau review. Stay tuned, the written review and gallery and all that good stuff is coming on kumasau.com. Link will be in the description. Like, share, subscribe, and see you next time. All right, and one thing to note is that during the review, I don't know if you guys remember, if not, you can rewind. There was a piece that fell off. Um, I didn't see where it came from. I kind of brushed it to the side. It was actually, we'll go ahead and, It was this inside piece right there to the hand, part of the slider. I don't know if the plastic was just weak on that side or what, but it fell off and I was wondering why he had problems holding the gun and things like that after I slid it in, but it's because half of that was missing. I went ahead and I super glued it on. It's been probably an hour or two now since I've done that, but I used crazy glue, which actually kind of melts and bonds the plastic. But as you can see, oh, let me go ahead and get this slid in. It's actually my first time trying to weapon since, so if I screwed it up. Yeah, it slides in just fine. Go ahead and slide this guy out. Again, in, out, in. So, simple fix, yeah, but watch out, because for the size of the hand, these pieces are pretty thin. Um, mine might have just been a dud. The other hand was fine. The shield's obviously a lot heavier than the gun, so I really don't know what happened there, but just something to look out for, whatever. Easy fix, but, you know, sucks to have to fix things in general, and I just wanted to be transparent with you guys since I noticed that happened, and you guys probably did too if you were watching.